did the work? What did the workers do here? The last uh, th three months. Yeah, the last three months, about 80, 87 days it took, and uh, they replaced an old uh, metal arch with a brand new three-sided uh, concrete culvert, 32, 30 by nine concrete culvert um, on deep pile foundations. They had they drove sheeting, and then put the pile foundations in. There was uh, an AT&T uh, fiber optic duct bank that serves North Canton that they had to slide the bridge underneath. A gas line on the other side of the road, they had to slide the gas line underneath that. Um, happily, it's it's finally open here, uh, and we're we're moving forward. You, you've been uh, thinking about this closure for a long time, and it, it took about nearly a month more than you anticipated. And what were your thoughts on that whole process? Well, it's it was a lot of a lot of tension upon upon our part and the part of the contractors and the workers out there. A lot of relief that it's open now. Um, a lot of sleepless nights. Uh, there had contractors employees were staying at the hotel. Uh, they were working the last two weeks. They've been working 24/7 uh, shifts for 10 to 12 days. So yeah, it's 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 a it's a big sense of relief. Glad that it's that it's over and it's open. Uh, it, it turned out to be quite an endeavor. We knew it was an endeavor all along. We'd been planning for the utility relocations for years in advance and some of the the railroad coordination, uh, but it uh, and it turned out to be every bit of a every bit of the challenge we thought it was going to be, and then 28 days more of a challenge. And how long will this culvert be here for? It, the service life is expected should be 70 years. Yeah. The bridge structure that you see is, a, like I said, a 30 foot by 9 foot three sided box. There were actually 26 separate sections, each one six or eight feet long, six or eight feet long. The giant, the crane that was out here would lift those up and set those into place. These these uh, flared ends, or what we call wing walls, those were separate concrete pours. That's for when the water comes up, just to direct the water through the channel, so it doesn't undermine underneath the road and the bridge or underneath the road uh, and cause erosion and then cause a failure. So each one of those wing walls was poured separately. And then of course, just to further reinforce the creek bed, uh, we put what we call riprap in here to stop, uh, stop the, bed, the uh, embankment from eroding. Um, after the culvert structure was put in, uh, we had to come in and, and uh, rebuild the road over top of it. There's actually a section of North Canton water line that had to be replaced. So you can kind of see that there. Then the contractor came in, did the road grading, put in the aggregate base, and over the last two days, he's put in the, the asphalt base and final final asphalt striping, and we had to reconnect the old uh, signal for uh, Stratmore. The one that's up there? Cor uh, correct. Right over and what work uh, remains? Um, a little bit of grading, um, seating, straw, wor uh, straw matting. Uh, there's a sidewalk that we have to finish on the other side, on the south side of Everhard Road that'll connect up to Stratmore and then connects to the other side. Uh, some missile, and then as you get closer to the intersection of Everhard and Whipple, uh, there's some signs that still have to be added, a couple pavement markings and some additional grading. You can see, Robert, right in this area, we've got to back up behind the curb, make the, make the, uh, the ground level behind the curb and regrade all that, and, and essentially that's about it. And next spring, they will come back and put a final coat of asphalt just over the bridge area that matches the asphalt on the rest of the project. That, that type of asphalt requires 50 degree temperatures, which we're not gonna get until next spring now, most likely. And there'll be some grass planted? Yes, yeah, yep. Uh, uh, yes, and, and we worked with the uh, Metro RTA Railroad, and as part of the project, we rebuilt the crossing, uh, so it should be a lot smoother. I haven't been over it yet, but I'm, I think it's a lot smoother. And that's, that's the best thing, I, I know you know, it was uh, the detour was pretty heavily traveled. It was a big inconvenience. Uh, like I said, it's, it's you know once every 70 years we got to replace the bridge. There's never a good time to do it. I'm, I'm just glad it's done. And, and uh, you mentioned how important it was to get this done by Thanksgiving, right? Correct. That was something that uh, we had put in the original contract plans. That the total completion date for the project, which is which we're at now, what we call substantial completion, we wanted to make sure it was done before Thanksgiving of 2019. So happily, we've made it before that. And uh, what do you think? What's your thoughts on the overall Whipple Everhard project, which is this is part of? Right. Um, certainly a, a, a good project, a uh, long time in coming. Uh, it's one of the one of the busiest, if not the busiest, intersections in Stark County. Um, it has a pretty high accident rate. That's something else we looked at. We're, by adding center turn lanes, uh, adding drop right turn lanes, and, 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 and additional left turn lanes at the intersection itself. And a, and a two way left turn on two legs. We're hoping that that reduces crashes. We've lengthened the, uh, the, the length of the turn lanes on all four approaches. So that gets everybody where they need to be and should get them you know, stored and then through the intersection in a little bit safer manner. So it's, it's, a, it's a big thing for us.